The path he chose for both his education and his research were novel. He attempted to see the future when most of us were still marred in the present. Uh, and his ability to particularly see where technology was going to drive biology, bioengineering, and ultimately where biotherapeutics would play a role uh, was unique. He's advanced the whole field of nanoparticles, targeted nanoparticles as therapeutics. It's just amazing to see that in a very short period of time, an idea went from an idea to treatment of patients. And you don't see that too often in, in medicine. Cancer drugs inherently are very toxic. Their effect on the body, in large part, is because they induce cell killing. And so the ability to bring cancer drugs specifically to cancer cells and in large part mitigate their effect on healthy cells has a potentially paradigm shifting uh, capabilities and effect. What if you could swallow a pill that conducts surgery? Tell us exactly what we're talking about. A tiny robot that goes inside you, what, what can it do? We're able to put drugs in spheres uh, that are small enough that you can put about a thousand of them side by side mm -hmm. in the cross section of your hair. As director of the Laboratory for Nanomedicine and Biomaterials at Brigham and Women's Hospital, Dr. Farouk Kassad is an extraordinarily gifted physician scientist and one of the most highly regarded leaders in the field of nanotechnology. He's a one-of-a-kind uh, guy. He is a ball of energy. Um, he is enthusiastic. He's passionate to help people in an inherent drive. I don't know where it came from. We came to the States when I was beginning my high school years. He was 13 years old at the time. We were both born in Iran. It was a time of civil unrest. There was the war going on, the Iran-Iraq war. There was the Iranian revolution. So he got to really see firsthand uh, what the effect of war is on a society. And I think that's shaped a lot of who he is. In fact, a lot of my friends uh, who were just a year or two older than I was ended up uh, going to war and some didn't come back. And that ignited uh, love and admiration for healers and medicine. The first thing, Omid is a doctor. And he's actually a very good doctor. And he doesn't take anything for granted. Not the diagnosis, not the therapy, and a status quo is not an option. He's challenging everybody, but first he's challenging himself. And so that makes him a very, a very good partner and it's very motivating to work with him. And sometimes he, he even asks, maybe I'm challenging you too much. And then I tell him, no, absolutely not. You should continue to do that. It's been a, a real thrill for me to watch his rise from a fellow to, you know, a young professor to a very, very successful professor to somebody who's won major awards like the Russ Nano Prize to somebody who's also become an incredibly successful entrepreneur starting multiple companies and, 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 and really just doing a, you know, unbelievable job at that as well. These companies are advancing our academic innovations to commercialize nanotechnology products, which I hope will make a massive societal impact. So one of the reasons why uh, I'm interested in starting companies is because every great science and technology that gets developed has to overcome many, many obstacles. And when it's live or die and there is no other option, well, let me tell you, the motivation to succeed is very different than if you just license a technology in where tabling it may make no difference. But if it's the basis for a start of a company, then the decision to shut it down is a very difficult one. And very often you don't. And because you don't, the chance of becoming successful are actually much higher. I think it is um, unfortunately growingly rare where we see very talented physician scientists see the private sector as not only enormous opportunity, but indeed a challenge to improve upon the human condition. It is exquisitely important to have talented physician scientists like Ob bridge that gap. And he's done it with great vigor and great success. And I'm very optimistic that over the years to come, certainly decades to come, that the impact of nanotechnology and nanomedicine and human health would be enormous. But, you know, I talk about Omid, I think of him as a force of nature. He's unstoppable, he's brilliant, you know, he's changing the world and he'll continue to change it.